Hi, I'm Matt Malott with Sterling CRE Advisors. Housing affordability is a perennial topic in Missoula. Why does it cost so much to own or rent a house here? How does that work? The simple answer is that it's because a bunch of greedy developers and Californians who can afford to make above market cash offers come in, swoop up all the properties and make it unaffordable for everybody else. Actually, it's not that simple. Life would be much easier maybe if it was, but there's actually much more to consider. Today, we'll look at some of the factors that are making housing so expensive here. There's no doubt about it, Missoula is a popular place to live and work. COVID aside, Missoula has had strong job market in the last decade. Uh, you couple that with remote workers, retirees, second homeowners, it means that a lot of people are clamoring for housing in Missoula. In rough numbers, for every job and a half that we create, we need to build a new housing unit to accommodate that growth. So whether that's a new apartment, uh, townhome, single family residence, whichever, over the last few years, though, we've fallen behind in construction of new units, which has resulted in lower apartment vacancy rates, higher rent, and fewer homes available for sale. Take a look at this graph, which boils supply and demand down in the Missoula housing market by showing the number of residential permits issued each year since 2010. The blue portion is for single-family residences, while the orange and yellow are for, are for multifamily residences permitted in a given year. You can think of the permits issued as our supply curve. This green line you see here is an approximation of demand for housing units, which we determine by dividing annual population growth in Missoula by the average household size. Whenever you see the units permitted exceed the green line, it's the next year that vacancy will generally increase. And the inverse of that is also true. You can see that since the recession from about 2010 to 2015, we were generally permitting fewer units than were demanded by population growth, but just slightly. This resulted in a slight tightening of vacancy rates in apartments, uh, an increase in rent growth in the 2015 and 16 timeframe. Notice though that builders responded to that market signal in 16 and 17 with a huge boom of apartments that delivered in 17 and 18. There were almost 1,100 apartment units that hit the market then, which caused vacancy to spike and some landlords were even offering rent concessions to get tenants to sign a lease at the end of 2018. However, as rising interest rates, construction costs, and land prices in 18 and 19 seeped into the market, as you can see in this gap, a significant year-over-year -year slowdown in the delivery of all types of housing took hold, uh, but most notably in apartments and rental housing deliveries. As the gap between units permitted and housing demand grew, prices of houses for sale and apartments for rent ramped up considerably. In 17 and 18, housing prices grew by 8.1% to a median home price of 290,000. From 18 to 19, it grew by 8.6% and is now $315,000 for the median house. Over the same period, average rents for an apartment grew by about 4% per year. So what can be done to keep housing prices stable? Missoula can either decrease demand or it can increase supply. And there are two ways to decrease demand. The first is to make Missoula an unpleasant place to live, uh, polluting our rivers, outlawing breweries, or replacing the national forest with parking lots would probably do the trick, but that's obviously not gonna happen. The second option is to discourage economic growth, which therefore would decrease job growth and generally fewer jobs mean fewer new people moving to an area. While some cities may limit economic incentives for companies that provide lower wage jobs, it's almost unheard of for cities to tell businesses they can't bring their jobs to their communities. With the near-term impacts of COVID-19 aside, decreasing demand for housing in Missoula over the long term is unlikely to happen. That means that affordable housing in Missoula is going to require increased supply of housing units, which is what we'll cover in our next video. So thanks for watching. Let us know what you think by liking this video and leaving a comment below. To see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button followed by hitting the little bell to get notifications. Be the first to know about projects, developments, and new properties hitting the market in Missoula. Sign up for Sterling Market Watch updates by following the link in the description below.